Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here, New Life Pentecostal Church, Albany, Georgia. Hope you're having a great day in Jesus. We're going to do a, a comparison of one of my favorite Bibles, the Archaeological Study Bible, and another one of my favorite Bibles, even though they don't make it in King James, or maybe they do now, but I don't have it. I just get it for the notes. Anyhow, um, the Cultural Backgrounds Bible. And I've been asked to do this um, on multiple occasions because people are like, well, what is the difference between the Archaeological Bible? Bible and the cultural background Bibles. Now, the cultural background Bible is going to be more like a manners and customs book. If you're acquainted with that, if you're not, I recommend everybody to read a good Bible manners and customs like uh, White's book, uh, Freeman's book, Gower's book. Uh, who else has got one? I don't know. You know, maybe uh, Unger has one. And then biblical archaeology, of course, is going to be uh, discoveries in the Holy Land. Like they'll find pieces of pottery, they'll find buildings, they'll find palaces and that type of thing. So really that's that's the basic difference. And uh, you can kind of see once it gets out of the box they're extraordinarily similarly sized. I think they're both Zondervan Bibles. They are in fact Pat Zondervan out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Grand Rapids is a huge center of Christian book selling. The Dutch Reformed Church up there, Calvin College, it's just massive for Christian publishing. Erdman's is based there, Baker Bookhouse, Kriegel is based there. And uh, now Zondervan has been purchased by HarperCollins, which also purchased Thomas Nelson as well. So let's cut straight to it. This is so the leather is going to be um, the archaeological and the uh, hardback is going to be the cultural backgrounds. I'm just going to see, I was going to see if I can get something similar, like a very similar passage and let you just see what's going on. I tell you what, I'm going to do it like this. So this is the cultural backgrounds. Now you can see how these two Bibles are going to blend in because to obtain the cultural background, well, you're going to find quite a bit of archaeology. And so this is what the uh, archaeological study Bible is going to look like and be like. Now, you're not going to want any one of these, you know, they're not in large print. They're eight and a half point print. I'm not real sure, but it is, it's not big print. Let's just say that. And they're both going to have, as you can see, they're both going to have center column reference and they're both going to have um, commentary at the bottom that are going to be germane to the subjects at hand. And they're just fantastic. Both of them are going to have very useful information. Now, the one thing I would say about the Archaeological Study Bible is it does have what I would call a, a New Evangelical bias. It's going to not be traditional biblical archaeology. It's going to be kind of modernistic biblical ar archaeology and give a lot of, of ground to modernist and to evolutionist and this type thing. So this is what, when you are in the archaeological study Bible, this is what the beginning of a book is going to look like. That case, First Kings. We'll try to get you First Kings in this one as well. So you can kind of see what you're looking at as far as differences. Now the print's much better in the uh, those parts in the cultural background study Bible. You can see that. But they're both going to be they're going to be Bibles that you might use more for reference than kind of taking with you because they're just big Bibles. We're going to take you to the New Testament in the Archaeological Study Bible. You can see that it is, in fact, red letter. 
We're going to see if the cultural backgrounds is red letter. I've also done reviews on each of these individually. They go in depth. Now, just a cursory reading. Um, I'm going to say the cultural backgrounds has a little bit better print and more notes. And this is the standard edition. Now what I'm going to do now is just let you take a look at some of the illustrations. First I'm going to show you, they really did a good job here because it's glossy hardback. You don't find that a lot in books with, uh, or Bibles with slip covers. A lot of times it's just, you know, doesn't look real good. This one is actually glossy. Now a lot of people go ahead and take the uh, slip cover off because it gets beat up over the course of time. And if you're buying these used off of eBay, you know, thrift books, all this, Goodwill, the, the slip cover really adds nothing of substantive value, everything that you want on the inside. So let me just let you take a look at some of the highlights of, say, the Cultural Background Study Bible. You'll be able to see you know, they just do a really good job there. And then of the Archaeological Study Bible, we're going to do a few of these. And I'm going to say, I mean, it's just uh, every few pages, many times consecutive pages, are going to have things such as this. I think this is real good on David's family tree, ivory and gold anointing horn found at Megiddo. So, you know, there's going to be just a lot of cross-pollinization there as far as archaeology and cultural backgrounds. Now, which one would I personally like? Eh, you know, that's tough to tell. Probably the cultural backgrounds, believe it or not. Show you another place in the archaeology that's just really good. Now, I don't get these like for the translation. I get these for the notes on the inside of them. I'll show you another thing the cultural backgrounds, the Shroud of Turin controversy, which I would, I would doubt the authenticity of the Shroud of Turin. Um, Jesus said, Blessed are those that have not seen yet believe. But there's a lot of people that put a lot of stock in the Shroud of Turin. Here's Pompeii with the Sufius. And they really did a good job on the archaeological, the color scheme. It's got like a reddish gold in it. I'll show you something else here in the cultural background. And it's in James, like dress and fashion in the Greco-Roman world. That's just good stuff. Now, one of the things you get when you have full color illustrations in a Bible, the Bible is such a huge book, you know, 66 books in one, that you tend to have a lot of bleed through. And this would be no exception. Time and Revelation, good chapter headings here in the cultural, the millennial, the millennium, Zion, New Jerusalem. Um, like, this is good. Like th and this is not so much cultural backgrounds. To me, that's just a good study Bible. Like the dimensions of the New Jerusalem. And so there's going to be, in the archaeological, a glossary, which is good. I mean, it's, this would be like a great freshman course in archaeology. And subject index to artifacts, that helps you find stuff. And then a very small print, but rather extensive concordance. And this is also going to have an index to articles in alphabetical order. The concordance is set up maybe a little better. And I do like the dual color scheme in the cultural backgrounds. But it does seem like the archaeological is uh, more extensive. 
going to show you some of the maps. This is a two-page map. Appreciate Sister Fran zooming in and out there. So it looks like 16 maps in the cultural background. Let's see what we've got in the archaeological. They're both going to be like real big Bibles. And what happens if you make them any smaller, the print gets smaller and it just becomes very difficult to read. And this has 14 maps. We'll do a measuring here. Since they're almost the identical size, we'll just measure them uh, identically. So right at nine and a half inches tall, which that's not so bad. Nine and a half inches tall is not so bad. And then, uh, let's see, about six and a half inches wide. And that's not a real huge Bible either. But when we get to the thickness, <laughs> that's where the rub is going to be. We're going to see that they're about two and an inch quarter thick. Two and an inch quarter thick, and that's pretty thick. I'm going to guess these Bibles weigh like four pounds, five pounds each, something like that. Unlike the original King James weighed 30 plus pounds. It was a huge Bible. Let's see the total page count here. If we can get it. We can to a certain point. You know, it's only a little over 2,000 pages, which is not a huge Bible. They were running these on sale, the archaeological. I got that for a really good screaming deal. And this one is about... Uh, 2350 something 2358 so the cultural background study bible and the archaeology study bible archaeological i should say uh, both by zondervan both really good study bibles i would probably prefer the cultural backgrounds but uh couldn't go wrong with either one and we just know archaeology proves the scripture and we have nothing to be afraid of it's only archaeology misinterpreted is the only uh, thing that would ever be a concern to the Christian so God bless I'll talk with you later in Jesus name